Well, hello, hello, hello again. Glad to have you joining me for another study in the Word, another Thursday night session. We're doing this on a Thursday night, but you can be watching this at any time. But we're just glad to have you with us tonight and that uh, God's going to be glorified as always through the Word. So we give God praise for what He's showing us, where He's taking us, what He's brought us through, what He's bringing us to, because the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. And we're still declaring that the glory, the greater glory is here. Amen. So let's look into the word tonight and let's see what the Spirit of God is going to show us tonight from the word concerning the, the, the prophetic ministry. Because folks, I know without a shadow of a doubt, we have moved into a new prophetic season. I believe this is a fresh prophetic season and God's doing a new thing. And one of the new things that he's doing, he's re-establishing and opening up a new prophetic season. And we need to understand prophecy, the gift of prophecy, the office of the prophet, like never before. Why? Because these are weapons of our warfare. Now, we're going to pray. We're going to go right into the teaching for tonight. And God's going to be glorified. Father, we thank you for each one that is tuned in. Those that will tune in even, in that, even after we get started. And God, that you'll be glorified through the word tonight. Father, help me to speak clearly, understandably, with patience tonight, Father, that I can deliver your truth. I have nothing without what you give me, God. And I trust you. I, I hold to you. I lean on you, Holy Spirit. I trust the angels of the Lord, the angels of revelation, the angels of fire to deliver this word through me tonight, God, that your people will better understand the prophetic ministry and what their part is, our part is, in operating in, in the gift of prophecy and in the office of the prophet. We thank you tonight, God. You be glorified, claiming a harvest as usual. For through the word tonight, backsliders coming back, lost people being saved, and uh, that, uh, that a strong church will be raised up that will be able to confront the enemy and make the church the glorious church that you you shed your blood for. And we thank you for that tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So we give God praise again. Oh, glory to God. Give God thanks for victory in every situation. I want you to know you have victory in every situation. Ladies, you are victorious tonight. It doesn't matter what the enemy may have thrown at you, what he's trying to come against you with. You are victorious. And I'm speaking that to the ladies tonight because I, I come to know that there's a special attack the enemy has launched against women during this time. He's after everybody, but the women of God are under, under siege of the enemy trying to put him in bondage but we declare victory for you amen had an awesome time that word sunday i believe it helped a lot of women to, to be assured of their breakthrough assured of their victory because we believe that god god's glory when that greater glory is returned it's it's a, it's 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 benefiting our personal life as well as our corporate church life as the body of Christ but our personal lives will be benefited so we give God praise but because the glory of the Lord in the glory of the Lord is everything that we need and your victory is in the glory of the Lord tonight my brother your victory is in the glory of the Lord tonight my sister and God's gonna be glorified so tonight let's go into it turn in your Bibles to the gospel according to St. Luke gospel according to St. Luke chapter 22 is where we're gonna launch this from tonight still talking about the, 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 the gifts of the Spirit, and right now we're into what I believe to be the best gift, what the Bible describes as the best gift, which is the gift of prophecy. But tonight we're going to look at prophecy, the gift of prophecy, as well as the prophetic ministry, because the gift of prophecy works with prophetic ministry. And we're going to use for a subject tonight, the two swords of prophecy, two swords of prophecy. Because I do believe that the Spirit of God is revealing this to us for the time in which we live. Because folks, we've got to get an understanding and a better understanding of the gift of prophecy and the prophet's office. Because they make up the two swords of prophecy. It's the gift of prophecy and the prophet's office. And we got to know how each function. And this also has to do with our theme on, 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 on prophecy as an understanding prophecy. Because, because we got to get an understanding of this area of ministry. Because the apostolic church is just as much a prophetic church as it is apostolic. Amen. In other words, apostles function prophetically. And apostles also function uh, apostolically amen so we're raising up an apostolic prophetic company of believers 
In other words, we're going to be apostolic in the sense that we've been sent by God with the assignment to carry out the ministry of Jesus Christ in the earth, but we're also sent by God to carry out that portion of Jesus Jesus' ministry, which was the prophet's office and through the ministry of prophecy. So we're going to talk about tonight, we're going to teach you on the two swords of prophecy. And, and the Holy Spirit showed me this passage here in Luke chapter 22, beginning with verse number 36. Luke 22, 36. Okay, get your highlighter, your, your pen, your pad, your pencil, write down some things, take some notes, because I think this, I know this is going to be very helpful to us, and we're going to better understand the prophet, the prophet's office as well as the gift of prophecy. Looking at the two swords of prophetic ministry. Okay, in Luke chapter 22, verse 36, I'll begin reading verse 36. It says, Then said he unto them, What now? He that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. You see what this is what Jesus said here. He's telling his disciples, he says, he says, he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Other words, Jesus was telling those guys to arm yourself because a sword is a weapon. I said a sword is a weapon. And what we're looking at tonight are the two weapons of prophecy, the two swords of prophecy. Jesus told his disciples, he told them, if you don't have a sword, he that has no sword, verse 36, let him sell his garment and buy one. In other words, Jesus said, it's time to arm yourself. Let me tell you something, folks. It's time for us to arm ourselves, arm ourselves spiritually, but also arm yourself physically. Amen? Why? Because in, 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 in Jesus' day, the sword was a weapon. They didn't have weapons. They didn't have weapons like we have today, but they used the sword as their weapon. Jesus told his disciples, sell your coat and buy your weapon. Amen. I don't know. I'm prophesying to some people here tonight. You might need to sell something and get and, and get you a weapon. I'm talking about in the natural. Amen. Why? Because we've got to be wise and we got to protect ourselves. But the best sword that we need to have is the sword of the spirit, which is that spiritual sword. Amen. Amen. You know, there's violence, there's danger everywhere, and we have to be able to heal ourselves and protect ourselves. See, because when 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 the the, the, the soldiers came to arrest Jesus. And, and that and that one soldier, a, a pilot, or that Roman soldier, came to arrest Jesus. Peter pulled out his sword and chopped off the man's ear. All Jesus did was heal the man's ear and told Peter, put the sword back in the case. He said, put it back in your sheath. He didn't tell him to get rid of it. He said, just put it up, put it back in the case. Put it back in the case, Pete. You're going to, you, you, you may need that later. In other words, Jesus desired that his disciples be physically armed. Amen. Amen. And some of, oh no, we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't do that. Hey, Jesus told him, Jesus told, told his disciples, sell what you got and buy yourself a weapon. Amen. Amen. And you can take that and use it anywhere the Lord leads you. But I'm just telling you what the man said. I'm telling you what the Lord said. I didn't write this. Jesus told him to sell their, their garment and buy a sword. Okay? But what we're looking at tonight, we're not talking about physical weapons tonight. We're, we're focusing in on the weapons of the Spirit, which is, or which are, the two weapons of Bible prophecy, or the two weapons of prophetic ministry. And this is what I'm going to look at. And he said, uh, 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 sell his garment in Byron, verse, said, verse 37. For I say unto you, that this is that which was written, yet must be accomplished in me, and he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning him. In other words, Jesus was telling them what was prophesied concerning me must come to pass. And he's about to go to the cross. He's about to be crucified. And and, and verse uh, chapter 22, he finds himself with his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane just before he was crucified. Okay. He said, these things concerning me have an end. Then verse 38 they said, this is what some of the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it's enough. He said unto them, it's enough. I believe one of the disciples probably went out and did like the Lord said. As it said of him went and buying one sword, he went and got two swords. So he brought it back to Jesus and said, here, Lord, I got two swords. What Jesus said, Jesus didn't say, get rid of that. Jesus said, that's enough. He said, that's enough. He said, that'll, that'll protect you. That'll, that'll cover the need of whatever may come. 
he, he said his two sword that's enough okay so now the two swords we're, we're looking at tonight are the two swords of prophecy there are two swords to prophecy and we're going to look at that tonight because prophecy is a weapon in the spirit it's a mighty weapon in the spirit the gift of prophecy is the greatest weapon among the nine gifts of the spirit in our previous teaching we revealed that we unfolded that from the word of god that the gift of prophecy is the greatest of the nine gifts of the spirit in other words it's the greatest weapon that we can have and and then we share some things with you why the gift of prophecy is greater that that than the revelation gifts or is greater than that than the power gifts why because prophecy reveals all of the other gifts to us Amen. It's through, it's through prophecy, it's through teaching, it's through preaching that the other gifts are revealed. So, so, so the greatest gift of all is prophecy. So we must understand this great gift. Do we want to understand the greatest gift, which is a uh, prophecy, which consists, which consists of the gift of prophecy and the prophet's office. Now we need to look at both of these because these are the two swords of prophecy. You got the gift of prophecy and the prophet's office. Now we're going to break down and look at how each one does operate. But a couple things I want to share with you before we, we focus in on uh, those two weapons. You, you see, because uh, prophecy, prophecy is speaking God's word and understanding by the Holy Spirit. That's what prophecy is. Prophecy is speaking God's word by by, by, by an understandable language and, and, and you see and, and it's under the unction of the Holy Spirit whenever we speak under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that's prophecy so so we we need to understand you see because what is what's been happening folks what's been occurring a lot of people have been prophesying and not even knowing that they've been prophesying not even realize that they've been prophesying they've been prophesying unknowingly but I believe the teaching tonight is going to help us to understand and know when we are prophesying and when we are hearing someone else prophesy. Because we, a lot of us have been doing it. We've been prophesying, but we've been doing it unknowingly. Amen. See, we need to know our weapons. We need to know when we're prophesying. We need to know what we're hearing. And we need to know when we're hearing the gift of prophecy and when we're hearing the prophet's office. Because these are the two swords. Now, now, when, we're, when, when you prophesy, these are the areas through which prophecy flows. Because many, like I said, many have been prophesying. Many of you out there, you've been prophesying, you didn't even know it. Amen. You see, because God wants us all to prophesy. Now, now there's, a, there's another verse I want us to look at before we look into this. I want to go to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 19, because we're looking at two swords. We see from, from, from uh, the gospel of uh, Luke there, where, 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 where Jesus told the disciples to go buy a sword, amen? And the man came back, one of the disciples came back and said, here, Lord, I got two, amen? Jesus said, that's enough. Otherwise, when you got the two swords of prophecy, you got enough. I said, when you, got, when you understand and use the two swords and operate with the two swords of prophecy, that's enough to turn the devil back. It doesn't matter what he come against you with. Why? Because prophecy is the greatest gift. Prophecy is the greatest of the nine gifts of the Spirit. So if we got the two swords, that's all we need, folks. That's all you need, my brother. That's all you need, my sister. But we got to get an understanding. And we've got to get an understanding of prophecy and the gift of prophecy and the prophet's office. Okay? Now, in Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, listen to this. You see, because this is very foundational to what, what we're about to share with you tonight. Okay, Revelation 19, 10. John said, I fell at his feet to worship him. That's the angel. John said, I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see that thou worship, see, see that thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that hold, that have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Worship God. Okay, so it tells us right here, we should never worship any angel. You don't bow to no angel. The angel said, I'm your fellow servant. Don't worship me. Worship God. Don't worship no idol. Worship God. Okay, the enemy uh, uh, clarifies John. John wanted to worship the angel. Okay, but we do not worship angels. We worship the Lord Jesus Christ. We can worship the Holy Spirit. We, can, we worship Jesus. We worship the Father. And those three, because the three make the one true Godhead. Okay, and now look at the last part of verse 10. Revelation 19.10. I call it the B part. He said, for the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. 
So what are you saying? Whenever we testify about Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ, whenever we testify about what Jesus has done in our lives, he said, that is the spirit of prophecy. So then, whenever I give a testimony, whenever you give a testimony, you're prophesying. You see, because like I said, a lot of us been prophesying, we don't even, don't even realize it. You see, because it says the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So if we have the spirit of Jesus Christ, we have the spirit of prophecy. So that tells me that we all are supposed to and all are required to prophesy. You see, because testimony is prophecy. I say it like this. When you testify, you prophesy. When you testify, you prophesy. Oh, got a little, a little, 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 little almost an apostolic rap there. And when you testify, you will prophesy. If you testify, you will prophesy. So many of you, you've been prophesying and you didn't even realize it. When you give a testimony, when you testify what God's done for you, how he saved you, that's the spirit of prophecy. And that's one of the ways in which we prophesy is when we testify. Hallelujah. That's why we should always have a testimony. Glory to God. Why? Because God wants us to prophesy. He wants us to speak for him. So testimony is one of the ways through which we prophesy. Now, also, prayer and intercession. Whenever, whenever we get involved in prayer and intercession, whether we are in private or personal prayer or in corporate prayer, that's prophecy also. Now, I'm going to share some things with you about, pri about personal prayer that I believe is going to enlighten us in, in, in a lot of ways. Okay, so prayer is a form of prophecy. Why? Because we're speaking for God under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And that's what, pro that's what prophecy is. It's, pro it's speaking for God under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in an understandable language. You see, because prophecy must be understood. I said prophecy must be understood. Okay, okay, so so we see here uh, that prayer, intercession, that is prophecy. Also teaching and preaching. Whenever we teach and preach the word of God, uh, we're, we're prophesying. And you see, that's why that's why the enemy will always seem to be, he seem to try attack us when we got to teach and preach the word. He'll try to put fear in you. He'll probably put discouragement in you. He'll throw everything after you when you got an assignment to preach this word. Why? Because the devil don't want us to prophesy. I'm telling you, he don't want you to prophesy. That's why so few believers have been prophesying. But I'm believing that through these teaching and through this revelation and understanding, when we know when we're prophesying, let it motivate you to prophesy. Let it motivate you to pray. Let it motivate you to pray corporately. Let it motivate you to pray personally. Let it motivate, motivate you and I to testify. Because when we testify, we prophesy, okay? Okay, so teaching and preaching of the Word of God is prophecy. Prophecy also comes through music. Music is a form of prophecy. In other words, anointed music that's, that's, that's ministered unto God. Amen. You see, because we can prophesy through our instruments. We prophesy through musical instruments. A amen. Amen. The trumpets prophesy. We've been talking about that on this past Sunday. The trumpet will prophesy. That shofar prophesies. In other words, that sound. The voice of God is in that sound. Amen. And see, we've got to know that when we hear that trumpet, when we hear that shofar, God is saying something to us. And, and may the Spirit of God, may the Spirit of God give us ear to hear what, what God is saying through the sound of the trumpet. And then when we hear what God is saying through the sound of the trumpet, then we can prophesy with understanding and give edification, exhortation, and comfort to the church. Prophecy comes through music, anointed music. You remember in, in, in 1 Kings chapter 3? When, 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 when the, when the, when the uh, kings, the three kings came to, came, came, came to Elijah and the Jehoshaphat was with them and, 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 and they wanted a word from the Lord, from the prophet Elijah. And Elijah, the first thing Elijah said, bring me a minstrel. He said, bring me a minstrel. And, and, and we use the term minstrel. We don't use musicians. The world uses musicians. But the church, the church has minstrels. A amen. Uh, that, that is an anointed prophet, uh, an, a prophet of music. Any, anybody that plays music under the anointing, plays music for God, that's an anointed prophetic minstrel. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for our minstrel prophets. Amen. In other words, prophets who prophesy through instruments and through music. We prophesy through music. We prophesy through singing. Praise, worship songs are prophecy unto God. Singing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Hey, amen. See, because these are ways to which we prophesy. 
And a lot of times we've been prophesying, many of the times we've been prophesying unknowingly. But God wants us to start prophesying knowingly. Glory to God. Because when we prophesy knowingly that we're releasing the word of the Lord, the devil gets nervous in the service and, and, and he'll have a hard time dealing with us and we could stop a lot of his activity when we know that we're prophesying under the under the under the power of the Holy Spirit. Singing praise and worship songs, uh, 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 praise songs, our uh, worship songs. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Singing in the spirit. For the Spirit of the Lord would say, I'm releasing my prophetic voice in the earth. I'm releasing my prophets to raise up and to rise up and blow my trumpet. And I've released them to prophesy into the atmosphere, prophesy into people's lives, prophesy and declare my truth, said the Spirit of the Lord. And this is the season of a new prophetic new, new prophetic move, said the Spirit of the Lord and the Lord of hosts. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You see what just happened there? The Lord just gave me a song in the spirit with the interpretation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, see, when we, we, we sing in the spirit, that's a message for the church. That's, that's, a, that's a message that can, be, that can be interpreted by the Holy Spirit. And we can understand what God's doing. You see, because singing, whether it's singing in our understanding or singing in tongues, singing in our understanding. That's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14. He said, I will sing in the spirit. I was singing with my understanding also. So we got we, we're gonna start singing in the spirit a lot more. Why? Because that releases the prophetic word. Hallelujah. So singing in our understanding and singing in the spirit is our forms of prophecy. And God gets the glory for that. Hallelujah. Uh, Psalms 100 and Psalms 49. Let's go go with me to Psalms 49. Come on, thank the Lord tonight for, for, the, for the teaching and the ministry of the word. I thank him. Hallelujah. Because it's the Holy Ghost, not me. Hallelujah. It's, it's, not, it's not Brother Rufus. It's the Holy Ghost. Amen. He gets the glory. He's the teacher. He's the revelator. Amen. He's the revealer of truth. Okay, Psalms 49 and verse number four. Talking about music. Hallelujah, because I believe that we're going to see tremendous prophecies happen through music. A tremendous prophecies come forth through, through through our minstrels. Hallelujah. I'm talking about our drummers, our, our keyboard players, our guitar players, our bass players, our, our percussion players, our organ players. They're going to prophesy on the instruments. Hallelujah. And, and interpretation is going to come. Hallelujah. And God's going to be glorified through the trumpet. Uh, okay, Psalms number 49. Thank God for the Holy Ghost tonight. Psalms 49 and verse 4. He says, I will incline my ear, my ear to a parable. I will open my dark sayings upon the harp. In other words, he says, I will open my dark sayings upon the harp. Uh, what are dark sayings? Mysteries of the Spirit. Mysteries, the, some of the secret things of God. The things that God will reveal. He said, I'll open them upon the harp. The harp is an instrument of music. And, and today, most cases, we don't use the harp, the old big tall harp like they used to use back, 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 back in the ancient days. But we use the guitars. We use string instruments. We use bass, bass, bass guitars, four string bass, five string bass. A -a -a Amen. I love these, 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 these six string guitars. A -a Amen. Glory to God. Now, don't you know a piano is a string instrument? It's also a percussion instrument, but it's a string instrument. If you open a, if you open a grand piano, hallelujah, no, there's, there's, there's a harp inside that piano. A amen. That, 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 that whole soundboard of that piano ain't nothing but a harp. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, had, I, had, I had the privilege of one time dismantling one one time. And when, I, when we dismantled that piano, I said, this is nothing but a harp. I mean, it's like a harp that's laying down strings, all different types of strings. He said, I'll open my dark sayings on the harp. Amen. In other words, instruments prophesy. I said instruments prophesy. So that when we hear anointed music, that's that's many cases God is sending forth a message. So we got to know and understand when we're hearing true prophecy and prophecy is is, 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 is going forth. Okay? So so uh, very good. Now, 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 the, and understanding prophecy, I mentioned this in the previous teaching, we got to know that we all should prophesy. We all are called to prophesy. We all must prophesy. I'm headed to 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse number 31. Tell the Lord thank you tonight. 1 Corinthians 14, 31. So he says here, verse 31, For ye all may prophesy one by one, that all may learn 
and all may all may be comforted so he lets us know everybody every believer should prophesy didn't he say in in, in, in joel chapter 2 uh, i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy joel 2 28 you see because the primary focus of the outpouring of the holy spirit is that sons and daughters prophesy that's why he said i will uh, and my sons and daughters shall prophesy he didn't say they'll lay hands on the sick he, he didn't he, he didn't say that that they will cast out devils he said they will prophesy why because when sons and daughters prophesy everything else gets accomplished because we get instruction in deliverance we get instruction in healing we get instruction and in living for god living holy but it comes through the sons and daughters who will prophesy and that means all sons and all daughters of the most high god are called to prophesy and that means you my brother that means you my sister and we need to understand this and one of the areas that we also must understand about uh, uh the two swords of prophecy is that we must desire you got to have that desire got to have that desire to speak for God. Every believer must have that desire. He, that's why he says in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, he says, uh, uh, back up here to 1 Corinthians 14, he says, he said, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you prophesy. He said, desire all the gifts, but above all, but rather that you prophesy. In other words, he wants you to desire to operate prophetically, operate in the gift of prophecy. And if you're a prophet, desire to operate in the prophetic ministry that God has called you to. Can you say amen to that? Now, now, still a little bit more in, 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 in understanding prophecy. Now, now, understanding prophecy um, mean uh, when, when we do any of these that I just mentioned, we're prophesying. If you, if you preach the gospel, if you teach you teach the Bible, amen, that's prophecy. If, if you sing for God in praise and worship, that's prophecy. If you give a testimony, that's prophecy. Prayer, prayer in, in, in your prayer closet or prayer corporately, that's prophecy also. Okay, now now when we do any of these, we're prophesying. That, and that, and this, this builds the church. Prophecy builds the church. That's why it's, this why it's the greatest of all the gifts. It's the it's the builder gift of the church. He said because the Bible says he that he that prophesies edifies the church, and that word edify means to build. So God wants us to be a builders of His church because He wants us all to prophesy. Because that's one of the reasons why prophecy is, is so great in the eyes of God. It's because it builds the church. Jesus said, "Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it." Now, Jesus builds his church through his believers. He builds his church through his disciples. He builds his church through his five-fold ministers. And he, he's called all of us to be builders of his church. He is not coming down here to build a building. He's not coming down here to build the church. He's going to build the church through us. So he wants us to be workers and builders in his church. How are we going to do it? Through prophecy, through the gift of prophecy and the prophetic office. Can you say amen to that? Amen. All must be builders. Okay. Uh, there, there are certain things that can motivate us uh, to prophesy. Okay. Uh, certain certain environments can motivate motivate you to prophesy. Motivate us to prophesy. Number one, uh, being involved in prayer, being involved in intercession. You know, because intercession stimulates the prophetic. Prayer stimulates the prophetic. You see, that's why at the end of, of all of our of, of all of our prayer calls, our prayer gathering, gatherings, we give opportunity for anyone that have a prophetic word that comes out of that. Why? Because prayer and intercession motivate and it activates the prophetic. It activates people to prophesy, to speak for God, and give the message uh, that God wants to deliver. Prayer and intercession is a motivator of of prophecy. See, because even even now, even in my personal prayer time. In my personal prayer closet time, I'm beginning to prophesy. I'm beginning to declare, pray in tongues, and then God give me the interpretation of that tongues, and I prophesy, declaring things in the name of the Lord, and, and, and it works through prayer. I said it works through prayer. The reason a lot of people don't prophesy, they don't get into prayer, or they, do, or they don't be around praying people. You get around people who will pray, you get in a prayer environment, that Holy Spirit is on the inside you. That spirit of prophecy is on the inside of you. It's going to motivate you to speak. It's going to make, motivate you to prophesy and to declare the word of the Lord. So a prayer environment stimulates the prophetic word. I said a prayer environment stimulates the prophetic word. Okay, so 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 this is so important. Now, now something I want to mention right here. The Holy Spirit showed me this the other. Showed me this here, here recently. 
He said, you do not have to be in a congregation to prophesy. You do not have to have an audience to prophesy. Now, now, now I'm, 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 I'm going to take that a little bit further. I'm going to clarify that and, and, and qualify that. You see, because a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of us think that, that, that and, 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 and this puts fear in a lot of people concerning uh, prophesying. They think that they have to prophesy publicly all the time. Sure, we are supposed to prophesy publicly. We are supposed to prophesy in, in the congregation. We are supposed to prophesy when other people can hear us. But we don't have to always prophesy so people can hear us. Okay? Now, now, now stick a pin in that. Hallelujah. Write that down. You don't always have to prophesy and be heard by other people. Okay? We're going to qualify that in, in a little bit. Now, let's finish up activating. That's it. I'm trying to get a little bit ahead of myself, but that excites me so much. And you're going to, you're going to be blessed when you find out the, the truth that that, that, that that supports that you don't have to always prophesy in the midst of people. Amen. You see, because this is how you can practice. This is how you can get started in prophetic ministry. Okay. Now, let, let me finish up this section here on what activates. Okay. We said prayer activates. Prayer activates. Being, being in praise and worship praise and worship also activates especially the worship part man that worship you get in the presence of god you get before the throne of god you see because praise gets us past the gates amen hallelujah we enter his courts with praise hallelujah uh, we enter his courts with thanksgiving and we, we, we get we go past the gates with praise and when we get past the gates we come before the throne that's where we worship and so, see when we worship hallelujah we get we, we get closer proximity to him in worship hallelujah and that's when he begins to speak so worship and praise also stimulates the prophetic it stimulates the prophetic word so so that that's why you should always want to be a part of praise and worship a amen uh, the praise and worship the song service the, the music ministry always get into that because that will stir up that prophetic gift inside you and you see you got a lot of folks that say you know it, 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 a lot of people they just they, i heard people say well i'll get there after the singing I'll wait till they, they, they get done singing, then I'll come. Because all I want is the word. All I want is the word. No, we need more than the word, folks. We need the presence of God. Amen. Praise and worship will put you in the presence of God. So you, it'll open you up so you can receive the word. Amen. Praise and worship. Pra praise is the plow. The Bible said, Judah shall plow. Praise will plow your ground and break that ground open so that seed can fall in and, and that seed can generate and produce fruit. Got to have that. Got to get into that. Get into that praise. Got to get into worship. Amen. Why? Because it opens us up for the word. Okay. Okay. Uh, being in praise and worship. Uh, being around other prophets. You know, just being in a uh, being a part of a prophetic company, a company of prophets. You get around other prophets. That prophetic mantle will come on you, amen, for, before you know it, you're prophesying. See, you, but you got to be in an environment where people prophesy. And you see, this is where the religious church don't get into the gifts of the Spirit. They don't operate in prophecy. Why? They don't allow and they don't recognize prophets. All they recognize is the pastor and the bishop. Maybe the evangelist, but just the pastor and the bishop. If you don't, want, right, if you don't recognize prophets, you will never have a prophetic environment and the people will never prophesy as God wants us to prophesy, prophesy knowingly, but being around prophetic people will activate that, 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 that gift, that spirit of prophecy in you. Why? Because you see that, pro that prophetic spirit is, a, is, is, is fire, man. That, 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 that spirit is fire. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a, it's a prophetic fire. Amen. And fire is contagious. Fire spreads. Fire cannot be contained. Amen. Amen. Fire spread. Amen. You know, hallelujah. You said you said something of fire, man. If you don't if you don't put that thing out, it'll burn up everything. Why? Same in the spirit. The spiritual fire is contagious. You get around prophets of fire, you get around prophetesses of fire. I'm talking about women that carry the fire of the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I mean, I'm talking about women who are prophets of fire, prophetesses of fire. They carry that fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And they prophesy from that position of fire. Amen. Because that causes other people to prophesy. Remember Saul? Saul in the Old Testament. And, and uh, I think it's uh, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 10. Where Saul got around that company of prophets. And before you know it, he was prophesying. And, and they would say, says, is, is Saul one of the prophets? He's among the prophets. And when, because he was in that environment of prophets, Saul began to prophesy. Amen. You get around prophetic people. If you're in a prophetic company, stay, stay where them prophets are. 
And before you know it, that prophetic mantle will fall on you. Glory to God. And thank God for the apostolic. Thank God for the fivefold ministry that believes in the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, and evangelist. But I believe this is a season when there's a focus on the prophet's office and, 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 and prophetic ministry. Why? Because God's about to release something and these two weapons, these two swords must be recognized. They must be understood because these are two swords of prophetic ministry, the prophet's office and the gift of prophecy. Okay, okay. Uh, the next one is uh, if, we, if we pray in tongues, speaking in tongues or praying in tongues, being filled with the Holy Spirit activates prophecy. Amen. You see, because prophecy operates from the filling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You got a lot of saved people, but they don't they don't operate in prophecy under the anointing. Amen. They, because they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. When you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, that's the beginning of the operation of the gifts. And the first gifts that you operate in is tongues, which is prayer language tongues. You, you pray unto God and, and prayer language tongues can lead into prophecy. It can lead into prophecy. Acts chapter 19, write it down, read it when you get a chance. Acts chapter 19, when, when the apostle Paul met the disciples of John the Baptist, he met the disciples of John the Baptist and he asked them, well, have they received the Holy Ghost since they believed? They, he preached unto them Jesus. They, they said, we have not so much known whether there be any Holy Ghost. The Bible said, Paul baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus, laid his hands on them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues and prophesy. Acts 19, 4 through 6. They began to speak with other tongues and they prophesied. In other words, they spoke with tongues, then prophecy came forth. So, 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 so tongues is it can be a prerequisite for prophecy. Amen. Because tongues, when it's interpreted, becomes prophecy. Now, we don't always have to speak in tongues first to prophesy. You hear that? Uh, here it comes again. You don't always have to speak in tongues first to prophesy. Amen. You see, because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy and he can come straight out of your spirit. Hallelujah. In that, in that understanding, declaring the word of the Lord. Amen. I'm, it's happening right now. I, hallelujah. I, I, I'm not speaking in tongues just before every word that I speak, but this the, the, the prophecy is coming forth right out of my spirit. Understanding under the unction of the Holy Ghost. You don't always have to speak in tongues first before you prophesy. Hallelujah. That unction, that unction will bubble up right out of your belly and it'll come out straight forward. That's that, that second sword. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Of, of, of the prophetic word. But it doesn't always have to be, it doesn't always have to follow tongues. Amen. Amen. It, it can follow tongues and it does follow tongues on many occasions, but it doesn't always have to follow tongues. Hallelujah. And glory to God. You can just speak it and you don't have to use thou's and thus saith the Lord and all that. Just talk like you normally speak and, and prophesy the truth of God. But you don't always have to speak in tongues first. See, this too has is very important in understanding prophecy. Okay? Now, okay? Uh, also, we, we must we must desire. You got to desire. The desire also activates. Uh, desire also activates. Now, now, uh, let, let's get back to uh, we, that we don't need to always have to have an audience in order to prophesy. You see, because prophecy can come forth. We can prophesy when we in our personal prayer time. In your personal prayer time, you can declare decrees. You can declare the word of the Lord. You can, you can, you can uh, declare God's, God's purpose and God's plan. You can speak to things even in your prayer time. Declare, speak to your situations. You can do that in your personal prayer time when nobody is around. Prophecy don't always have to have an audience. You see, because this is how a lot of us can get started. You start prophesying in your prayer time, in your prayer closet. Hallelujah. Start declaring, hallelujah, my finances are going to straighten up. I speak to my bank account. I speak to my health. I speak to this sickness in my body. And I say, by your, by his stripes, I am healed. Hallelujah. You're prophesying. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't have to have nobody around. Don't have to have nobody hearing you all the time. Amen. You see, this is going to get a lot of people started in, 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 in prophetic ministry to know that you don't always have to prophesy before an audience. Hallelujah. And this gets get, this will get you over that fear. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the whole issue is a lot of people are just afraid to speak publicly. Amen. They're afraid to prophesy before people. Amen. Or whether they're afraid they make a mistake or afraid they're not capable and all this. No. Start in your own prayer closet. Amen. A -a Amen. Example number one. God, when he created the heaven and earth, he prophesied. Genesis 1, 1 through 3 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 
and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was, was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And the Bible says, and God said, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Was there any people around God? Was Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden yet? Nobody was around. God prophesied into the atmosphere. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He spoke into the atmosphere. In other words, he lets us know we don't always have to have an audience to prophesy effectively. All we need is the unction of the Holy Spirit. The uh, faith that's in God, that God will hear us because because our words have power. Hallelujah. When we, when we prophesy, we're speaking for God and we don't always have to have an audience. So start practicing in your prayer closet. Start declaring things in your prayer closet. Hallelujah. And before you know it, you'll be prophesying publicly. Amen. Hallelujah. That's, that's a good place to practice. Why? When God created heaven and earth, what he did? God prophesied. Hallelujah. He prophesied this earth into existence. He prophesied the heavens into existence. And there was not a man or woman around. Hallelujah. He spoke and his word and the spirit of God created the heavens and the earth, the stars, the heavens and everything that's in it. The seas, he spoke it into existence and there wasn't a man or woman or nobody around. In other words, you don't need a crowd to prophesy. Ah, they both shake Katie on the thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Then the Bible says you shall decree a thing and it shall be established and the light will shine on your ways. He didn't say you shall decree it and people hear you. He didn't say you shall decree it in the congregation all the time. He didn't say you shall decree it around people. He said just decree it and it shall be established and the light will shine on your ways. Why? Because the Bible says, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 11 that the, that the things which are made were not made of things which do appear. The things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. In other words, when God created the heaven and earth, he created from unseen elements. What were the unseen elements? His word and the power of the Spirit. And he didn't have an audience. I said he didn't have an audience. He didn't have a human audience. So you don't need a human a, a audience of people to, uh, to prophesy effectively. You don't always have to prophesy and people hear you. Now we should. We should. What? Well, that's how the church gets, receives edification, exhortation, and comfort. But don't think that we always got to prophesy around people. Glory to God. Okay. Example number two. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. I hope somebody get this tonight, tonight and, and you, you you begin to prophesy in your closet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You go out, you go out, go out in the backyard and begin to prophesy over your neighborhood. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This could be this begin to prophesy over your neighborhood. Hallelujah. Prophesy over your city. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This say this city belongs to Jesus. I declare. I declare this city belongs to Jesus. I declare this church will be a church of power. I declare my household will be a household of glory and power and a household of more than enough. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just, just do like Ezekiel did. You see, because Ezekiel didn't have an audience. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. What am I emphasizing here? The two swords of, this, uh, of prophecy is the prophet's office and the gift of prophecy. But we don't always have to have an audience around us when we prophesy. Ezekiel chapter 37, where was he at? He was in a valley full of dry bones. Okay? He said, he said, the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me out in the spirit. 37, 1 of Ezekiel. Carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and he set me down into the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them round about and behold, there were very many in the open valley. And they were low, uh, they, they were, and low, they were very dry. In other words, this is dry, just as dry as a chip. I mean, this is dead, this is dead as a, this is dead as a doornail. Everything in there was dead. Nothing but dead, dry bones. That's all was out there. Okay, verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. In other words, God was testing him. God asked Ezekiel, can any life come to these bones? Ezekiel said, Lord, I don't know. Only you know. Glory to God. He said, he just said, I don't know. Amen. And see, don't be ashamed to say I you don't know. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, He said, Thou know it. Uh, verse 3. Thou know it. And again he said unto me, verse 4. He said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. Okay, so here 
Ezekiel prophesies to an inanimate object without life. See, we can prophesy to things. Amen. You don't always have to prophesy to people. You don't always have to prophesy in the, in the congregation. You can prophesy to things. And we're going to look at that a little bit deeper here, just a little bit. He told him, prophesy. He said, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. You know what that tells us? You know, that tells me everything God create can hear. Everything God create can hear the voice of God. A tree can hear the voice of God. A rock can hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. The dirt can hear the voice of God. Everything that, that's a part of God's creation can hear the word of the Lord. Why? Because it's the voice of God that created it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So that's why we can speak to things. We can speak to things. Why? Because things can hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. He, he told him, he told him, he told him dry bones here. It wasn't no life in those bones. He said, tell him, he tell him, hear the word of the Lord. Now he wouldn't tell him to hear the word of the Lord if he couldn't hear it. He would not have told the bones to hear the word of the Lord if the word of the bones could not hear. A amen. Why? What I'm telling you, everything God has created can hear God's voice. Hallelujah. You can talk to that car when it don't run right. Hallelujah. That's a part of God's creation. Now you say man made it, but it, it made all the all the all the parts and all the, all the, all what put that car together came from something that God made. Amen. You can speak to that washing machine that don't work right. Say in the name of Jesus, you're gonna operate properly. You can speak to that family situation. You can speak to that circumstances, speak to your finances, speak to your health, speak to that sickness and tell it to get out of the way and get out of your body. He said, tell he said, prophesy upon these bones. Hallelujah. See, we gotta prophesy upon upon these uh, upon in, inanimate dead things he says say unto them hear ye the word of the lord he said thus saith the lord god upon these bones behold i will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live and i will lay sinews upon you and bring bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and, and, and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that i am the lord see he, god prophesying life was going to come even when death was was present he prophesied life was going to come even when death was present. What around you is dead or dying? Start prophesying life into that thing. Stop prophesying life into that thing. Again, I, I'm emphasizing the fact you we can prophesy some, to some things. And we don't have, always have to be prophesying to people. Why? Because Ezekiel prophesied to a valley that was full of bones. He said, he said verse 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded. Oh, I love that. You got to prophesy like you were commanded. That means you got to hear the voice of God first before you can speak. You see, because no prophecy comes forth without hearing. Amen. We've got to hear the word of the Lord. We've got to hear the voice of God. Then we speak. A Amen. Hallelujah. He says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and there was a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone, and the bones came together and the bones came together. When you start to prophesy, when we start to prophesy to the things around us that are not working right, that are dead and dying, there's going to be a shaking and they're going to be a coming together. Otherwise, it's going to start to working properly, but we've got to know that we can prophesy Hallelujah, when nobody's around. And you see, this is where Ezekiel was. He was in a valley full of bones. He didn't have a church congregation and a choir around him. It was just him and those dry bones and the Holy Ghost and the word of the Lord in his mouth. Glory to God. He, and he said they came to shake it and the bones came together, bone to his bones. He said, beheld, he said, when I be, and I beheld and lo, sinews and flesh came upon them and skin covered them. Uh, 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 cover, cover, covered them above, but there was no breath in them. You see, because because God had already said He's gonna put He's gonna put sinews and gonna put put skin on on the bones. Verse six, and, and, and when He prophesied, it happened just like that. Glory to God. Okay, and, and He said in verse nine, then He said unto me, Oh, I love this here. He said, prophesy unto the wind. Glory to God. Not to people. Prophesy to the wind. Glory to God. Have you ever had to speak to the wind? Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Breathe upon these slain that they may live. Other words, sometimes prophesying to the wind, we prophesy to the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I say sometimes prophesy to the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just speak out into the space. Hallelujah. You just get in a room by yourself and just prophesy to the to the atmosphere in that room. Glory to God. And just what Ezekiel did. He prophesied to the wind. 
He prophesied to the wind. He prophesied to the wind. Hallelujah. Prophesying to the wind is prophesying to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you see, in the wind, the angels are in the wind. You see, unseen, but the angels are in the wind. Hallelujah. That sound of a Russian mighty wind was a sound of angels and chariots coming on the day of Pentecost. But the church prophesied in prayer to the wind. Hallelujah. And, and there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ezekiel had to prophesy to the wind. Glory to God. And what happened? The wind came. Life came into those bones. Life came into those dead bodies. And the Bible says in verse 10, Ezekiel 37, 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. Glory to God. But what, 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 am I, what am I emphasizing? We don't always have to prophesy in the midst of people. We should, but we can prophesy in our personal prayer time. We can go out in, 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 in a park somewhere and, 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 and go out. I, I, a lot of times, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm near a lake or near the waters, I'll just prophesy over the waters. Glory to God. Come command those evil spirits command those demonic forces to stay in the waters glory to god just prophesy into the atmosphere and god will operate and he'll change circumstances and situations for us and god will get the glory hallelujah he prophesied to a dead valley of bones didn't jesus said we can speak to the mountain and say to the mountain be moving and cast in the midst of the sea hallelujah start speaking to that thing in your life start speaking to that situation in your life that's going in a wrong direction prophesy declare your des desire there Did Je didn't jesus prophesy to a fig tree he prophesied to the fig tree and the fig tree dried up why the fig tree was part of god's creation and, and, and all of god's creation can hear the voice of god hallelujah it had to obey him hallelujah prophesy to those things in your life that is going in a wrong direction prophesy declare your own desire then Glory to God. God told Moses to, to speak to the rock. Hallelujah. And the rock gave water. He told Moses to speak to the rock. And the rock gave out water. And that means we can, we can declare some things. Hallelujah. And God will work miracles. You see, because when we speak under the unction of the Holy Spirit, and we declare under the unction of the Holy Spirit, it activates the power gifts. Gifts of faith. Working of miracles. Gift of healing. But we, a lot of times we got to just talk to it. Hallelujah. Just declare it. Let it know it has to get in line. Talk to that evil spirit. Talk to that habit. Talk to that addiction. Talk to that rebellious child. Just say, yes, you're rebellious now, but you're going to straighten up. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna live right. You're gonna be, you, God's going to use you mightily. I don't, I don't care what it looks like now. Talk to that rebellious uh, uh, family member. Just, just speak to them and say, yeah, you may be using drugs now, but you're going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. You're going to serve the Lord. You're going to get saved. You're going to get filled with this Holy Ghost. You're going to get filled with the fire of God. Amen. you got to prophesy to your lost loved one. Just prophesy over them. Prophesy, declare concerning them. Amen. Hallelujah. And sometimes you just got to tell them to your face, you're going to serve God. Amen. I prophesy you're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's given us authority. Hallelujah. And, 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 and the word of the Lord in our mouth is God putting his word in, his, in our mouth. And he'll, he'll bring it to pass and he will not prolong us. And we'll see the glorious move of the Holy Spirit like we've never seen it before when we understand the operation of the prophetic word, the gift of prophecy and the prophet's office. Okay. Now, now, as we conclude, we're talking about two swords. Now let's compare the two swords that we can understand the two swords of prophecy, which is the gift of prophecy and the office of the prophet. Now, the gift of prophecy does three things, edification, exhortation, and comfort. 1 Corinthians 14, 3. 1 Corinthians 14, 3. He that, he, he that, he that prophesies edifies the church. For, the, for, for he that prophesies edifies, exhorts, and comforts. Does three things. Edification builds up. Exhort encourages. Comfort consoles. That's the gift of prophecy. Now the prophet's office can also edify and exhort and comfort. The, the, the prophet's office. Now the prophet's office is the higher level of prophecy. The office of the prophet is the highest level of prophecy. Now because the gift of prophecy, all believers can operate. But all believers are not called to the prophetic office. Amen. So that's why we got to identify who our prophets are. And we do that through confirming your, your ministry call. Amen. And we've confirmed the call of some, some prophets here recently. And we got to know who they are because they will operate in a higher level of the prophetic. Those that are called to the pro pro prophet's office. Ephesians 4.11. 
He gave some apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, ministry for the edifying of the, of the body of Christ. Uh, uh, many are called to the prophet's office, but not all. Amen. So, so the prophet's office will also edify, exhort, and comfort, just like the gift of prophecy. Okay, the gift of prophecy can operate in any believer. The gift of the prophet's office only operates through those who are called to the prophet to the office of the prophet. And you see, there's a difference there. And you see, uh, the, uh, the the prophet's office can operate with music or uh, through music. The gift of prophecy does not operate through music. Amen. You see, see what one operates through music. The, the gift of prophecy does not operate through music, but the prophet offers does. You remember Elijah? He, he said, bring me a minstrel. And soon as the minstrel played, 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 11 through 15, as soon as the minstrel played, he was able to say, thus saith the Lord. That's the office of the prophet. Now, 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 now the gift of prophecy does not operate that way. Not the gift, because the gift only does three things. Edify, exhort, and comfort. Amen. So, we need to know when we're hearing the gift of prophecy and when we're hearing the prophet's office. So that's why the Holy Spirit is having me reveal how both of these swords operate and both are needed. See, we need we need the gift of prophecy, but we also need that prophet's office. Thank God for the prophets. Glory to God. And a lot of times, I, no, no, I, I, I've been called to be to the office of the apostle, but I, I, I operate and function more apostolically no, no more, more prophetically than I do apostolically at times. Okay, now uh, looking at both both of these swords again. Now, now the gift of prophecy is a function. That's a function. But the prophets, uh, but the, but but the office of the prophet, that's an office. Uh, in other words, that's a ministry office. But the gift of prophecy, that's a function. We function and 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 the gifts of prophecy but the but the prophet operates from the prophet's office which is a prophetic ministry gift amen okay uh the prophet's office foretells in other words the prophet's office can tells the can tell the future the gift of prophecy does not tell the future it tells forth what is already uh, established in the word of god the gift of prophecy tells forth but the gift of prophecy foretells. So when you hear somebody uh, revealing truth, predicting something in the future, revealing something that's hidden that's not known by the person speaking. In other words, if you hear a person saying, uh, well, well, you know, uh, 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 sexual sin is wrong or, 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 or that, uh, that alcohol is, is wrong. Uh, you shouldn't be drinking alcohol if you're a Christian. You see, that, that could be the prophet's office right there because you can have some people sitting right around you or right around you that, that's in the sexual sin, that's in the alcohol, that's using drugs, but the, the, the prophet's office will reveal the hearts of men and, and, and you don't even know what's going on with them. That, that, that's the prophet's office. But the gift of prophecy does not do that. It does not reveal anything, but it just for it this tells forth but the gift of prophecy the, the the prophet's office will foretell and it will reveal something and, that, and that's the difference uh, another difference in the in the prophet's office and the gifts of prophets gift, gift of prophecy prophet office the prophet office reveal what is unknown to the speaker the prophets also also can speak judgment and rebuke prophet's office now can speak judgment and rebuke amen but but the gift the prophecy does not speak judgment or rebuke. Not the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy only edifies, exhort, and comfort. Hallelujah. And see, we need these two swords. We need to understand how these two swords operate. And the reason the Holy Spirit is having me uh, teach this tonight is so that we can understand when we're hearing the gift of prophecy and we're hearing the prophet's office. Now, the gift of prophecy edifies, exhort, and comforts. The prophet off, prophet's office will foretell, reveal the future, like tell you your last four year social security number, tell you the last four year license plate, and I don't even know what the last four year license plate is. You see, because that's a revelation gift. Amen. The office of the prophet is the office of revelation. It reveals things that are unknown. It reveals mysteries in the midst of the people. Okay? Okay? And the prophet's office can also speak judgment and rebuke. Amen. Uh, the prophet, the office of the prophet can rebuke. 
Amen. I mean, but we rebuke in love. Now, but we, sometimes you're going to have to rebuke. And in some cases, speak judgment. Paul spoke judgment upon a man in Acts, in, in, in Acts chapter, in Acts chapter uh, I think Acts chapter 14. When, when, when Paul told a man he's going to be blind for a season because he was so evil and he was trying to stop the word of God. Paul, Paul told him you're going to be blind for a season. He spoke judgment on him. That's the office of the prophet. The gift of prophecy does not do that. Okay, the, the office of the prophet also uh, prophesies miracles, signs and wonders, and operates and performs miracles, signs and wonders. The gift of prophecy does not operate or perform miracle signs and wonders. Because the gift of prophecy what does what? Edify, exhort, and comfort. It builds up, encourage, and console. Gift of prophecy. But the prophet's office, miracle working, power. Glory to God operates through the prophet's office. Uh, supernatural operations through the prophet's office. And the, and the gift of prophecy is also a weapon. That's a weapon. Why? Because the gift of prophecy edifies, exhorts, and comforts. That builds the church. It makes the church strong. It makes the church more effective. The prophet's, also, prophet's, prophet's office also is a weapon. Why? Because it destroys the works of the devil. It reveals the secret things that the enemy wants to keep hidden. Hidden comes through the prophet, prophet's office. These are the two swords of prophecy. The gift of prophecy and the prophet's office. We need them both. And Jesus said, you got two swords, it's enough. So folks, let's use these two swords. Hallelujah. Let's get a better understanding of these two swords so that God can flow through us. His word can come through us. And we can, we can, we can see the glory and the power of God released like we've never seen it before. And we can, we can see the church becomes built and strong like God wants it to be. But it comes through the two swords of prophecy, the gift of prophecy and the office of the prophet. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you tonight. Let's pray. And let's believe that I will activate these, the gift of prophecy in every believer and will stir up the, the, the prophet's office. If you're called to the, to the office of a prophet, you know that you've been called, you've been confirmed as a prophet. I'm going to pray that that gift be stirred up in you and you'll be able to hear the voice of God like never before because both swords operate through hearing. Both swords operate through hearing the voice of the Spirit, that still small voice, and we speak out and declare what God has spoken. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for each one that have listened tonight, each one that have heard this teaching tonight on the two swords of prophecy. And Father, I pray right now, God, for every believer, and I activate and I stir up the gift of prophecy in every believer. Father, help us to understand and operate and know that we can prophesy in our personal time. We don't have to be around people all the time. Let us begin uh, to operate in this manner. Hallelujah. Father, I declare right now, I stir up the gift of prophecy in the church. I stir it up in every believer that's listening tonight. And that will speak words of edification, exhortation, and comfort to build your church, build your people to be more effective and to be the church without spot or wrinkle. The church is glorious through the gift of prophecy. Now, Father, I pray right now for every prophet that's listening, every prophet that have watched this tonight, every, every, every prophetess, every, every female prophet right now, I declare right now the activation of that fire that prophetic fire in their belly, in their mouth, in their in their in their spirit. I stir it up with my words tonight, and I, I declare the fire to begin to blaze. The fire to begin to blaze, and that prophetic word will come forth with power. It will come forth with fire. With, with fire, Father, you said you will put uh, your words in our mouth as fire, and the people will be as wood. I speak that for your prophets tonight. And God, I declare boldness. I destroy the spirit of fear right now that will stop the prophets. In the name of Jesus, God, I declare visions. I declare, I declare, uh, I declare miracles. I declare trances. I declare prophetic dreams for the prophets. God, in the name of Jesus, God, that they will know the plan and the purpose of God, and they will speak. Thus saith the Lord: Set the captives free, destroy the works of the enemy, work miracles, signs, and wonders through the spoken word. And God, as you use your prophets in this last day, as as this prophetic season advances. God, raise up more prophets, establish more prophets, confirm more prophets, that you be glorified in Jesus' name, and that the lost will be saved, and many will come to know Jesus Christ in a real way, finish their course, fulfill their assignment, and I bless all who listen tonight in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God for you tonight. Boy, I sense a, I sense a prophetic power. I pray that that word will be in your mouth, in your, in, your, in your belly, like Jeremiah said, like fire shut up in your bones. Amen. Hallelujah. And you'll speak it out 
and we're going to see God perform miracle signs and wonders through the two swords of prophetic ministry, the two swords of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, and the office of the prophet. May the Lord bless you tonight. Hope you got something out of this. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I'm going to prophesy to you tonight just how to get to know him. Repent of your sins. Come to the realization that you need God in your life. Come to the realization that you're tired of the life of sin and repent tonight and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. And ask him, to, ask him to forgive you. And he will do that. And God will be glorified. And you will be a part of this prophetic army, this apostolic prophetic army that God is raising up in the last days. He wants you included. Hallelujah. He saved you. For, he brought you on this earth for a purpose. And he has saved you tonight for his purpose. Hallelujah. And he wants you to, to speak his word. He wants to put his word in your mouth. And you will glorify him through the spoken word as you prophesy. And as you are called to the office of the prophet, will operate in that office. May the Lord bless you tonight. May, may the glory of God be upon you. And may the word of the Lord come out of your mouth like fire in these last days. And you too will be one who will prophesy the word of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Till the next time, we love you. Keep yourself safe. Stay with the word of God. Stay in prayer. And do those things that activate prophetic ministry in your life or the prophetic word in your life. Do those things. Participate in those things. And God will be used. You'll be used by God in these last days. God bless you. Until next time, got some good, more good videos coming on, on the prophetic. More good videos on the gifts of the Spirit. More good videos on the glory that's coming. So always stay with our Feel the Fire Live broadcast and our YouTube channel. Share it with somebody. Uh, 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 share it. Like it. Share it. And I believe God will get this word out. Because folks, we're in the last days. And we need to know the truth concerning the prophetic ministry and the two swords of prophecy. And the Lord bless you. I'm going now. In Jesus' name, stay strong.